Is this the most perfect prayer book I've found so far? my search for the most perfect prayer book for me and for my preferences and my use of the prayer book, which admittedly may be different than your preferences and your requirements. And in that video, I laid out the qualities that my most perfect prayer book would have. Namely, one, it would have the morning and evening prayer or matins and even song of the Anglican Church. It would have the complete Psalter, preferably in the Coverdale translation, as found in the 1928 American Prayer Book and preceding prayer books. It would have a table of lessons. It would have the Great Litany. And it would not include many of the things found in a prayer book, such as this wonderful international edition university press 1662 prayer book that i have been using nearly daily for a year and a half uh, which has all of the things i require but also includes things that the book of common prayer naturally includes that i do not use day to day such as the uh ordinal uh, catechism here, occasional services, burial of the dead, etc., visitation of the sick, things that I would not use day to day and therefore are not as useful in a dedicated prayer book for me. So while I have been using this and very much enjoying this for morning and evening prayer, uh, I was in search of a prayer book that did not include those things which I did not need. Uh, on a regular basis in my prayer book. Uh, and I made a video on that subject that you can find if you have any interest in that regard. Some of you on that video had some recommendations for me, and I appreciate all of those always. And uh, one viewer and commenter on that video, a very generous gentleman by the name of Ryan, offered to send me his prayer book and um, did so quickly, which I have received and have been perusing and using for Matins and Evensong since as a way to familiarize myself with it. And in certain respects, this may be the most perfect prayer book I've yet owned when compared against my list of priorities and requirements for a prayer book. What we have here is, first of all, just appreciate the beauty of this volume, a very thick prayer book. This is Divine Worship Daily Office Commonwealth Edition. This was produced by and for the personal ordinariates established under the Apostolic Constitution, Anglicanorum, Chaitabus, something of that character, uh, for the ordinariate, uh, that is, those Anglicans who wish to become Catholic but continue to use the modes of worship with which they were familiar in their Anglican parish, namely <clears throat> the daily office of morning and evening prayer. So. Ryan, first of all, thank you so much for sending this. It is a magnificent book. Let's just talk about the physicality of it first. It is wonderful to hold in the hand. It's a good size. And here's something I love about this. See how the cross motif on the front is worn from someone holding it like this day after day after day. Similarly on the spine, the hand that held this and used it um, those are not defects. That's 
that is a uh, a badge of honor on a book such as this. Uh, it has this wonderful gilding all the way around, and I am a Gideon Society for book darts. Uh, but I have not been brave enough, even though I sing the praises of book darts and talk about how they will not harm your pages and how wonderful they are, and they are, but I haven't been brave enough to put them here, mainly because it'll break up the the uh, continuity of this wide expanse of gilding. I mean, that's just beautiful. I just hate to break it up with a uh, with a book dart there. So I found other methods to mark my place, including the six included ribbons, which is very nice. This uh, cover, this binding is, I'm assuming some type of synthetic. It could be a, a type of leather, I am not certain. Uh, maybe Ryan knows, and if he happens to see this, we'll comment. But it feels wonderful in the hand. It is very soft. It's flexible. The book itself will lay open in your hand at almost every point. When you get to the beginning, it struggles a little bit. <clears throat> but uh, very easy to use. Let's look at the table of contents here. First of all, the first page. Uh, this is... Um, Walsingham, Our Lady of Walsingham, copyright 2021, the personal ordinariate of Our Lady of Walsingham, and the personal ordinariate of Our Lady of the Southern Cross, printed in Italy. So how this differs from other prayer books that I have owned, the major difference is, one, it does not include those things which I do not need in a prayer book. It is indeed an office book for the daily office, so it does not have the ordinals. I'm not going to be using this to ordain any bishops. I will not uh, be performing baptisms or um, Eucharist. I will not be uh, doing catechism out of this book. It's just for the daily office. And the major difference in making up the bulk of this book, this is a 2,000 page book and well over a thousand pages of it are the actual lessons for the day or every day of the year printed here in the book in somewhat small type and from the Revised Standard Version 2nd Catholic Edition so a, a translation that I am familiar with and very much like you can see that the print is small, but has a very nice font, has uh, red accents throughout on the initials and such. Uh, rubrics are in red, which is something that I very much love. So this is a complete office book. You don't need to have your copy of uh, the Bible, the scriptures with you. Uh, this has all of the readings you need. Of course, it also has the Psalter, uh, as you would find in every prayer book. So let's first look at the table of contents. And I'll pause on that. I'll hold that still so you can pause on that. If you looked closely, you'll probably see some things that, according to my strict list of what I want in a prayer book, um, would be negatives in this prayer book. And let's talk about that. In addition to the offices of morning and evening prayer, which when Thomas Cranmer instituted those, it was a mashup of the other hours of prayer. Here in this book, they have reinstituted some of those lesser hours. So matins and even song, morning and evening prayer are the greater, uh, the major hours of prayer. This one also has offices, services for prime, terse, sext, known, compline. Also things I am unlikely to be using at least regularly, Office of the Dead. 
the Psalter in here is the Psalter as it is found in the 1928 American prayer book, I believe. It is the Coverdale, and I think the uh, the version of the Coverdale is that which matches the 1928 American book. Very similar to this book, and for a similar audience, are these two volumes in paperback. Um, this one here was sent to me by Scott, aka Miserable Offender of Thrift Store Bibles. And this one is uh, Walsingham, Walsingham Publishing. So intended for the same Catholic audience that this book was intended for. And this one includes um, the Psalter, obviously, is just the Psalter. Nothing else from the 1928 prayer book. And the companion volume, I guess the deluxe version, has the morning and evening prayer, the daily office. Along with the Psalter, and that is all that is in that book. So, if you uh, want to really simplify, there you go. The obvious benefit to a volume like this is you don't have the need to have the Bible with you. Uh, that plus, it's just a beautiful book and so wonderful to hold. Uh, and I have been using it since I got it. Just look at the layout here. The um, ribbons were kind of in position when I received it. One of the side effects of not wanting to use book darts, at least not initially on this book. Um, these prayer cards are useful for marking some spots when you run out of ribbons. This one was in the book when it came to me, so hopefully Ryan knows that's there and that was intended. So at the beginning there is a uh, table of lessons. There's a calendar at first to notify you of saints, days, solemnities, feasts, things of that character. I have not made much use of yet. I'm getting to know how to use the book first for an ordinary day that is not a holy day, feast day, etc. The table of lessons here. Uh, I have a card marking the day, the appropriate day, where um, I think I'm releasing this on Easter 6 or the 5th, I'm sorry, Easter 7 or the 6th uh, Sunday after Easter. But I really don't need to have this marked at all because the lessons are laid out in order here in the prayer book itself. Um, so there's no need really to visit the calendar every day, the table of lessons. They're laid out in order and you just keep moving your ribbon. So I haven't used a ribbon for that. The first ribbon here. Is for the collects. It's laid out a little differently than prayer books I'm used to, so it's taken some some getting used to. So this evening and tomorrow I will be using the collect for seventh Sunday of Easter. The next ribbon. And this is laid out a little bit. This is how it came to me to a certain extent. I've just been adjusting it based on the date. This is uh, different than that shown in the tutorial that I found online for this book from uh, EWTN Catholic um, channel on YouTube. And I'll make a link to that. Um, the ribbons are just in a slightly different order than they recommended, um, but I find the way that Ryan had it makes more sense for me. Um, the uh, next ribbon here is for what they're calling supplemental texts. And these are things I haven't made much use of yet, but these include things like antiphons, things that you might want to add to morning and evening prayer that aren't in the 1662 prayer book or the 1928 American prayer book. It also includes hymns um, uh, that you can add at morning and evening prayer. I have put a card in here for the litany. So this does include the litany as well. And a card for the beginning of evening prayer. Morning and evening prayer is set up a little differently in this book than in every other prayer book I've had, in that they have separated out 
what they're calling the introduction, which includes the uh, verse or two of scripture at the beginning, the um, call to repentance, the, conf the general confession, uh, Almighty and Most Merciful Father, and the miserable offenders are included. And then the absolution, although there is an interesting note here in the general instructions that I noted. This is a Catholic publication, so the absolution is handled a little bit differently. The penitential act in the introduction to morning and evening prayer is a corporate acknowledgement of sin and includes an expression of remorse or lament and a plea for God's mercy. If a priest officiates, this concludes with the priest's prayer for the forgiveness of sin, which, however, lacks the efficacy of the sacrament of penance and is not a general absolution. Therefore, the priest does not make the sign of the cross over the people during this prayer. If the officiant is not a priest, the collect for the 21st Sunday after Trinity is always set in its place, as indicated in the 1928 prayer book. But I found that interesting is not a general absolution is noted in the instructions here. Anyway, so the introduction, because it's the same from morning to evening prayer, they have it here as an introduction separate from morning and evening prayer. And morning prayer then begins with, O Lord, open thou our lips and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Then the invitatory psalm, the venite, uh, everything else is set up as found in your... 1928 prayer book or 1662 prayer book, very similar uh, with the collects at the end. Uh, this one includes prayers for the Queen's Majesty. So this was printed obviously a few years ago, Queen Elizabeth. <clears throat> then evening prayer is separated after these other services, prime, terse, sext. So and uh, known. So evening prayer then I have marked with a card rather than using a separate ribbon for it. And you would use the introduction if you wish. And then come into O Lord open thou our lips, etc. And it's the even song that you are familiar with if you use a Anglican prayer book of any sort. And then we have Compline the, making this longer than it needs to be, the next ribbon I have used for my place in the Psalter, and it's on the same 30-day Psalter cycle as in every Anglican prayer book to date, in the Coverdale translation. That's another thumbs up. The next ribbon I have used for my place in the Lessons. It has it matins and even song. First and second lessons. So tomorrow will be the seventh Sunday of Easter. And then the last ribbon is here at the back marking lessons for holy days. Again, I've not really used this section yet. I'm operating as if every day were uh, ordinary and not a feast or holy day until I get used to maneuvering through the book, and then I'll add these other things in as I go. <clears throat> so more than half the book is the lessons from the Revised Standard Version, Second Catholic Edition. It does not have a lot of the things that I don't need in the prayer book. There are a few things that I will not find myself using, but all in all, as far as percentage of the book, this may be the most perfect prayer book I have owned to date. Uh, will that change in the near future? That's possible. Uh, maybe stay tuned on that front. But regardless, this is a magnificent book, and I highly recommend it to a Catholic or Anglican or someone like me, a member of a Wesleyan, holiness, evangelical, whatever you happen to be, you could benefit from doing 
morning and evening prayer, matins and even song, regularly using a book like this, worshiping the way your English-speaking ancestors worshiped. Uh, I don't know whether you can still purchase this new. I didn't look, but I bet you can find used copies of it. Once again, tremendous thanks to Ryan for his generosity in sending this. This was a book I knew zero about, and uh, I am very much enjoying getting to know it. Divine Worship Daily Office for the Ordinary at Our Lady of Walsingham. If you are so inclined, seek out a copy. And uh, I appreciate you watching this review. Hope to see you here again next time.